Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Now I'm on the index, the on the indexing angle plate this week. I've been off of it for a while, and you know I've just got caught up in other projects, and I really need to get this thing finished. And for those of you who are not familiar with what this is, you could go back and look at a lot of my other videos where I built this thing up until this point, you know, on video. But all it is is a 90 degree work holding device. Just 90 degrees. This is your work face. But this one has an extra function in that you can rotate it 360 degrees accurately and index it within a quarter of a degree. Now, what I'm working on today is the vernier scale or the pointer that goes on the back here that you line your marks up with. Now, this is just a prototype. I built it out of PVC. And just to, you know, go through the motions, go through my operations, make sure I can do it properly and not mess it up, uh, which I'm good at sometimes. But... Uh, the final one I want to make out of bronze, and I've already scribed my lines on it, and I'm pretty happy with it, so I want to machine it into its final shape, and I'm going to use the shaper for that. But first, I'm going to bring in, get you a little better look at this, show you my setup, and then we're going to cut this guy. Alright, <clears throat> here's the prototype. Now, like I said, this one's just PVC, and we scribed our lines on it. We scribed it in the milling machine. Uh, we just uh, set the rotary table up on the milling machine. We used a boring bar with a special little bit that we ground, and we scribed our lines. It worked out pretty well, and I'm actually pretty happy with it. So I tried it on a piece of bronze, and I was pretty successful. And uh, it's not perfect, but it's pretty close, close enough for me. And I want to machine it into its final shape. This is basically the shape that I want to machine it into. And as you can see, it's just bandsaw cut. We've got some lines scribed on it, some layout lines. And we're just going to replicate this shape as best we can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we want it to be close. And we're going to do it with a shaper. And hopefully, it'll turn out right and look good. I really like the way that it, the bronze stands out against the steel here with our index lines. And I did all these index lines on this shaper on video with the rotary table. And if, you, if you're interested, it's a pretty popular video. You can go back and watch that. Uh, took quite a while to scribe all these lines on here, but I really actually enjoyed doing it, and I'm glad that I did. So let's get this thing in the vise and see if we can cut a 15 degree angle. All right, now this head's tilted quite a bit. Usually this head is completely vertical, and you know this machine is very capable of operating like this. It, in fact, it's definitely designed to do it, and it has index lines on the side of the casting here, which I'll bring you around and show you in just a second. And what I did first is I lined those lines up, because they are extremely accurate, and to be honest, just lining those lines up would be perfectly fine and for what I'm doing. But I want to get it a little more accurate than that, just because I want to, to practice getting things, you know, as close as I can within reason to to my desired target, which is 15 degrees. I've got a precision angle, 15 degree here, and I've set it on the vice jaw, which is parallel with the uh, movement of the box left and right. And I got an indicator with a mag base, and I just attached it to the side of the compound. And I'll bring in and and show you the indicator. And I just brought it around here and set it on the angle. I'm going to bring you around here, we'll zero this indicator, we'll run along this angle and we'll tap this head into where we get zero on your indicator from one end to the other and then I'll be fairly happy that we're 15 degrees. Alright, let's zero this indicator. And you can see I just got the indicator attached to the compound and we got our little precision angle sitting on the fixed jaw of the vise and I'm going to bring it down and zero it. And see where we're at. And all we've done is line up the lines as close as we can get them. We're going to move this down this 15 degree angle and see what we get. Okay. So we've got a thousandth of an inch 
we're coming in a little steep so we need to just tap this guy up just a little bit I think using a lead mallet we may have went too much real zeroed at the bottom come back up this is a tense indicator so any movement is really minor okay that's what, three tenths It doesn't need to be this accurate, but it's fun just to practice, just for, you know, for the jobs that really may need to be this accurate. Run down again. Yeah, three tenths. So we went a little much. tighten it and see what that looks like. Now when we tighten it it may change a little because we're putting rotational force on this whole head just by tightening this, these bolts. It doesn't need to be extremely tight. But we don't want it moving. Really, we need the right tool for the job here, and this adjustable wrench is not the right tool. Alright, now that we're tight, this is zero. And check again. What do you think? I think that is pretty good. If you ask me. That's over what two and a half inches. Good enough. Okay, we're gonna call that good. Now let's get our part set up in here. And all we're gonna do clamp it out on the edge because we're going to have to run off the edge of this vise so we're just going to set this part out in here now I don't really recommend anyone clamp anything that they're going to machine hard on the edge of a vise because it's uh, you know you want to if at all possible put your work in the middle of the vise that way it doesn't uh, you know, camp the job but we're just going to be nibbling away at this guy so I think this will be more than sufficient piece of PVC in here to span our gap because of our parallels that we're using. They're actually wider than our part, so make sure this thing is seated. Clamp. Try this again. It's one of those situations where you need three hands. Tighten our work down. Now let's get the shaper cut set up and cut this guy. All right, guys. There's not going to be anything fast about this. Uh, we're just going to be hand feeding the whole length of this part, and we'll be coming off the edge of the vise here. Um, as you can see, this thing is tilted, you know, almost to its extent, almost 90 degrees from vertical, and the clapper. I had to tilt all the way, you know, to one side in order for the clapper box to close properly. And I've got a heavy weighted tool holder here to help it come back into the 
return position. It should operate fine, but uh, you know, there comes a point when you're rotating this head that the clapper doesn't function properly just due to the design. But a shaper's pretty versatile. I had several people try to talk me out of buying, you know, a shaper. You know, why don't you get something else? Or, and I don't regret buying this machine at all, you know, especially with the universal table. This machine will do just about anything a milling machine will do. It's just slow. So I'm going to get this thing cutting, and I'll show you a little bit up front, and then I'll bring you back when we're cutting more of the surface because it's pretty irregular, and there's no reason for you to sit there and watch me cut air. So we're just going to run this guy kind of kind of slow because we've got to be hand feeding. We're running, I think, a three-inch stroke. I'm just going to cut down to a touch. And I'm just running a round nose tool here. And I'm just going to nibble away at this guy. And I'm feeding on the back stroke. And I'm just probably dialing in ten thousandths at a time really not crucial right now, we're just rough. And once I stop cutting, I'm just raise the table a little. And go at it again. So I get this guy in the shape that I want.
get a decent finish, not that it matters, this is the underside. But I'm gonna finish this guy and I'll bring you back when we're done. Alright, I pulled it out of the vise there. And I'm just gonna knock the burr off this edge. Just uh, slightly. Now in this piece we got a little cavity here. So I'm gonna have to do something creative back here, but there's still some machining left to do and it'll be basically you know, machined off to there. So I'm gonna have to do something with the back of this. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't pick the why I picked the bad part of the material to use, but there we go. And looks pretty good, I think, so far. Set this up here. And it'll go back here. And the contrast is really good between the bronze and the and the steel. It fits really well. So I'm pretty happy with that. I've been really busy this week and last week. Uh, I really haven't had much time to spend out here. Uh, one thing that I did do is I have some of these Armstrong tool holders. This is a number T5S, and this is a, a T5S also. And oop, they're zero degree rake built in, so they're carbide holders, and you don't find them too often. And just so happens these are a little too big to fit my tool post and my shaper. And they hold 5 8 blanks. Now I have a whole lot of 5 8 tool steel. I don't have much half inch tool steel, which is what this one holds. This holds 5 8 or half inch blanks. So last week I machined this down. And these are made out of some pretty good steel. Uh, some pretty high quality stuff. And uh, having machined this one, there's not a whole lot of difference in the two, but you know, uh, about 200. 200 thousandths or so, too big to fit in my tool post. So I machined it down and I machined both top and bottom to make it look as factory as possible. I don't want to grind off more on one end than the other. Or I didn't grind anything. I machined this on the shaper. And uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. I need to get me some half inch tool steel. But now I can use these in the shaper, or at least this one for my 5 8 tooling. And I don't like to use these any more than I have to. They're great in a situation like this where you need the extra length, you know, and also to, you know, maintain, uh, you know, a rigid setup. Because these are, you know, they're designed for this purpose, so they're really rigid. So I'm glad I've done that. That was a little thing. It's Christmas time around here, and it's just been a busy time. I mean, I think most people can relate to that, and there hasn't been a lot of time for filming. I'm really glad you guys are watching. I really appreciate it. All my old subscribers and all my new ones. We're going to fit this guy up soon. I still got a little machining to do, but you get the idea. I just got to knock off the top here, and then we're going to have to find out a way to, you know, attach this to that, to the angle plate. Should be pretty interesting. I really appreciate you watching. If you haven't, make sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking on my little guy up here and hit the bell for notifications. And as always, I'll see you next time.